Okay, everybody, this video, I'm going to show you how to draw out a complex through truss bridge. What I mean by complex is that your top is not just flat. You have either multiple levels or you have just a peak or a uh, point in the top of your bridge. So if it's not flat, that is a complex through truss, okay? So we're going to start with what you need. First, you'll need your printout from yesterday. You're going to need your yellow design sheet. Yours will be yellow, mine is white only for the video so it's easier to see. You'll need a ruler from the box and a pencil. Do not use pen. Use a pencil, please. Okay. First thing you gotta do on your yellow sheet on the left side, there are some boxes here. One says designed by, and the other says class. These two right here. Those are the ones we're concerned about. I don't care about the other ones. We're going to, in designed by, write your first and last name. Mine happens to be Mr. Redemski. Please do not write Mr. Redemski on yours. Please write your first and last name. For class, put a P and then whatever number you are. One, two, or three. All right? So first and last name on design by. For class, put P and then the class number. One, two, or three. Once you have that, we're ready to start doing some design. As you'll notice on your paper, we have a few items on here. So we have sky. We have land blocks. Water. And we have this rectangle drawn across. Now, mine is highlighted yellow, so it's more visible in the video. Yours was not highlighted, but you can still see the box drawn across your paper. That right there is the road deck. Okay, that is the bottom beam of your bridge. So that beam right there is what is going to be this bottom beam on your bridge. It must be this long. It must match that exactly in order to fit on the testing rig and be fair. you also notice if we look closer at the middle, there is a little mark here. I'm going to make that a little bigger for my purposes. And that point right there is the midpoint. So that is the midpoint of the bridge. Okay, midpoint of the bridge. So that's the very center of the bridge. So that'll come in handy when we talk about connectors, okay? So the first thing we are gonna have to do is figure out where to put our connectors on the road deck. So first, in order to get your bridge drawn, you have to get the height set. Now on our bridge, we have a minimum height. So what we're gonna do is first mark our minimum to make sure you're clean. The minimum height for a through truss is eight boxes tall. That's because our testing rig is six boxes tall. We want to make sure you have a little bit of space, just a little bit of space to get the testing rig through your bridge in order to test it. So what we're going to do is come over to the end here and we are going to start just to start counting up above our road deck. So we're going to count up eight spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now what you're going to do is on the bottom edge of that eighth block, sorry, top edge, on the top edge of our eighth block, you're gonna draw a little line, okay? And you're gonna write next to that min, for minimum, eight. So you can see here on that eighth box, I have min eight written. For minimum height, eight boxes. Okay, that's the first thing we have to take note. Next thing you gotta figure out, for your maximum, now for a through truss, your maximum height limit is this very top row of completed boxes on your paper. You can't go into the incomplete copied box, you have to stay at this top row of complete boxes. That is your height limit, okay? So you can go up to that, especially having a complex design, you could end up going high, clear up to there. You don't have to at all, but you can go up to the last complete box. You have to be at least eight boxes tall. Here's the hard part. You and your partner are now going to have to figure out 
your bridge. You have to figure out multiple heights here. First, you're gonna have to figure out how tall your part. So in my particular bridge here, I have basically a normal truss, but I pushed up the middle section. Some of you have a regular truss and then another one drawn on top. So you have to go to your first corner height and you have to figure out how tall is that gonna be. And then you gotta go up to your next corner height and figure out how tall is that gonna be. Okay, so first you gotta get your heights figured out. That is our first challenge. Okay, so I want this one to be at least eight. So this one right here has to be a minimum of eight. Whatever your top level is has to be at or below our last full level boxes. So I'm going to, in this case, say that this main beam here, my first corner is going to be 12 boxes or 12 rows. And this one is going to be six rows higher. So that would be at 18. Okay, so we got 12 and 18. So I'm gonna mark those on my sheet here. So I'm going to start off just here again on the end. I know I already have eight marked. So this was the eighth box. So we're gonna go up to nine, 10, 11, 12. On my 12th box, what I'm going to do is trace over the top, the left, and the bottom edges of that box. The reason I'm doing that is because this is going to be the part of that beam. We're going to line up that beam across here. So I know that this beam is going to go this beam here is going to be going across there. So what I'm going to do really lightly here first is take my ruler and I'm going to line it up with the little box I made very lightly across my page because I know I'm going to have some beyond that on my particular. So I'm just very lightly going to draw across the page on that row. And I do the same thing on this one draw across on that row. So now you can see very lightly I have this 12 high beam across here. Now I know in the middle I'm not going to need that, that's why I drew it really lightly. But what that does is it sets me up for this end of the bridge and this end of the bridge. Because if you look at the design again, both ends of the bridge are 12 high. So this one's going to be at 12 this one's going to be at 18, the same as over here. Your bridge has to be the same height. Okay, now remember, you and your partner have to have the same matching corners. So this corner is going to match, this corner's got to match, that corner's got to match all the way through. Those corners are in heights are going to have to match. You can do whatever in between if you want to do verticals in between or diagonals or you put it straight across and then put one up here. That is completely up to you. But your corners all have to match. So you have to make sure you and your partner both have the exact same height measurements and uh, corner measurements. Okay, so we got 12 drawn across our page. Now we're going to go up to 18. So this was 12. I'm going to go 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Again, I'm going to put a little box around the top, the left, and the bottom of 18 rows up so i've got my 18 and i got my little box again we're going to lightly trace all the way across to make sure we are even again this is very light you just just want to see it and it will show up slightly better for this part on your yellow paper than on my white paper so again top edge, bottom edge, all the way across, just really lightly. So now you can see we have two beams right here. Okay. 
before we can set up our corners, we have to set up our connections down along the bottom. Because as you can see on our actual printout, we have a connection here, 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 one right in the middle, one here, one here, and one here. You have seven connections on the main road deck. All of your upper connections, now this will be different if you have angled or straight up and down, but your upper connections, we're gonna base off of our road deck connections, okay? So if yours is offset and angled like mine, where it's centered, you're gonna have to get your road deck connections anyway. If it's vertical lines, if you have a vertical line down here, vertical line here, you're still gonna have to line it up with your road deck connections. So we're gonna do our road deck connections now and then we'll use that to fill in our upper corners. If we look, we have our midpoint and our boxes. We need to know our spacing. So what you're gonna do is count how many boxes there are from the midpoint line. So from the midpoint line to the end. It doesn't matter which direction you go because they're the same. So count right now, take a moment, from the midpoint line to the end of the road deck. All right, coming back. So if you counted properly, you should have found from the midpoint to the end that we have 36 boxes, okay? Again, 36 boxes, that is from the midpoint over to here is 36, okay? What we have to do then for spacing is figure out how many spaces in between. Well, we have one section here, two sections, and three sections. So we have to take 36 and divide that by three. If we do our math, that is 12. So all of our spacing are going to be 12 boxes wide. Okay, 12 boxes wide. For every spacing across here, all these connectors are going to be 12 boxes wide. So on our paper, what we're going to do, we're going to start right on the end. And I am simply going to fill in this end box. Okay, on our design, we have right to the end. It's right at the very end of the road deck. So we're gonna go right there. So what I have done is just filled in that end box of my road deck. Color within the lines, make it nice, make it clean, because you still want to be able to see the corners for later. So we got our first one. Our magic number is 12. So what we're gonna do is count over 12. Our magic spacing number is 12. So we start here, we count over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. On that 12th box, we are going to shade it in again. Again, nice and neat color within the lines. Now we have another connector. This spot here is this connector. We have our end, and now we have this one. We're gonna keep going over 12 again for the next part. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And again, fill in our 12th box. So we have our three on this side of half. We're gonna skip halfway for right now because it's a little different. We're gonna go to this other end, the opposite end, and do the exact same thing. So again, we are going to fill in the end box. We're going to count over 12, fill it in, over 12, fill it in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Again, color in the lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Cut. So we have three on each side for six. Our middle one is going to be in the seven. Now what's tricky about this is the midpoint is actually on a line. So what we are going to have to do is make a new box that splits this box here 
and splits that box there. So you go halfway through that box, halfway through that box. I'm just gonna kind of leave it open, but I'm drawing my lines so you can see what I did there. I split the box, drew it down, right down the middle, drew this one down the middle. So my middle connection is right in the middle of my beam. There's the bottom. And we can use this now to set our top beam corners. Okay, so I'm going off of my design. This is where you're gonna have to look at your design. If you have vertical corners, I'm guessing your first vertical is right above your second, you'll have to do that. Okay, I'm going diagonal, so that's what I'm using for this example. If you have vertical, you use vertical. Now, I know my first two connections here are on my 12 high line. Okay, so I've got two connections here in the 12 high, two connections over here. So my connections though, since I have diagonals, are in the middle of these bottom sections. So instead of doing a weird thing, we're just gonna count to six because that's right in the middle. Then we'll go up and mark it. So what we're gonna do, start here. We're looking between the base and this 12 line. So we're gonna start here at the end and count over six because it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to move straight up the column and I am going to fill in that box on the 12 row. So I went in six and up to this level 12. That is the same spot as this connector here, right in the middle of this section, 12 high. I'm going to do the same thing for the next one. It's straight over. So I just go down here to the second one, count over six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go up to the 12 high row, shade it in. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do the opposite end. Down here, in six, same up thing. Up to the 12 row, mark it. Over six, up to the 12 row, mark it. Okay, so starting at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six and up, and I shade that in. Come to the second mark, one, two, three, four, five, six, up, shade it in. So now I have the two at each end. If I look at my design, I can tell I don't have anything past there, and past my second one in, it's wide open in the middle. So I'm going to erase my extra material at the ends and in between here. So that means on this paper, I'm going to erase everything to the outside of my end marks and everything inside here, just on this 12 row. This is why we made these lines really light, so that doesn't take a whole lot of erasing to clear them out of the way. We want those extra parts and extra lines out of the way. Now what we're going to do is with our ruler, just go over these sections nice and firmly to make sure that they are marked and we can see them clearly. So I'm just going to line up on the bottom, draw that one, come over, draw this one, make sure you hold your ruler firmly, come up to the top of those parts, those little beams, draw the top and the top. So you can see now I have very clean, crisp little top beams here. Again, those are this top beam and this top beam. My next top is right in the middle. I have two connectors up top here, and it is halfway between or halfway through to the left of the center and to the right of the center. So we're going to count over six from each of these connectors here and here. Then we'll go up to the 18 row and fill it in. So again, I'm not going to count from the middle. I'm going to count from this connector here. I'll go six and then all the way up to the 18 high box. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Follow that column all the way up to 18 high and fill in. This one, same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pull that all the way up to the 18 high. OK, 
connect that. Okay, that is our top here. Now again, we're just gonna erase some of the extra on both sides. That's why it pays to make marks lightly. And then we're going to reinforce those lines again, just going over them again with the ruler, just a tad heavier so that we can see them. So now we have our three top beam panels. What we have to do next is connect here to here and our ends. Now these are angles, so they're gonna be a little tricky, but we're gonna make it work. Our first one we're gonna do is right here. To connect this, we are going to have to connect the top left corner here to the top right corner around here. And then the bottom right to the bottom left. We're just making a line, an angle in the wood that's going to work. So you have to make sure though that you line up exactly on the corners. So this corner right on the line, bottom left corner of our top to the bottom right corner of our lower beam straight connection corner to corner top left corner of our top beam top right corner of our bottom beam or our lower beam there we go so again you can see corner to corner both of those we're gonna do the same thing here just opposite direction So top corner to top corner, bottom corner to bottom corner. Okay, now we have our top profile drawn. So you see this top ridge profile matches the top ridge profile of our printout. The last thing we have is our angled pieces here. For our outline, this is the last part we're gonna have. Now again, I'm going to go to the inside edges here now. This is important, I'm not going on the end here. I'm going on the inside of it. So I'm gonna connect this bottom corner. So the bottom right corner of this connector, right here, to the top right corner of this connector. So top right to bottom right top left corner to bottom left corner so right corner to right corner left corner to left corner it's really important that this part goes under this beam not to the outside so you can see on this beam it goes to the bottom here and it sits on the top here it does not go through it's not going clear back here or cutting through it sits on top between these are solid wood you cannot have wood go through wood like that okay so it's in between that's that one we're gonna do this one now same thing left corner to left corner right corner to right corner again line up your corners cleanly make sure your ruler is lined up properly before you make the mark and we have this now for the rest of this, when you fill this in, just go to the regular through truss videos. If you have angles like mine, you're gonna watch the through truss with angled beams. If you have vertical up and down beams, you're gonna watch the through truss with vertical beams. You can skip through the initial setup and get to the connecting beams part a couple minutes in on each video. I hope this helped. If you have questions, please ask.